for the HPLC, we first need to make sure that we have enough of solvent. So in solvent B, we have filtered HPLC grade water. In solvent A, we also have filtered HPLC grade methanol. Okay? The first thing, as soon as we come to an HPLC instrument, the first thing we got to do is do something, uh, of course after switching it on, we got to make sure that we can purge all the lines with the solvent. This is done in order to remove any air bubble which is trapped. So the way we purge is we got to use, open up the black knob in the bottom, take a syringe, and press A to purge solvent A. So as it is purging, liquid is going to come out. Purging helps in removing any air bubbles in the whole system because air bubbles are the biggest problem in an HPLC instrument. Uh, just to show you quickly what is there in this instrument, we have the detector, we have the pumps, we have a column, the HPLC column, which is a stainless steel column, we have the injector port, and finally we have the data management system. Once solvent A has been purged, we can switch to solvent B to make sure that we purge both solvents. Once we are finished purging, we got to close that valve. You, you have to remember to do this, otherwise you'll always have a leak in your HPLC system. So close the purge valve. Now in order to connect the computer to the system, you first you got to first click on the software called PC Navigator. Okay, it opens up this window. We go to Instrument. We first got to run, take control, click on the HPLC, say OK. So what it does at this point is it is communicating with the instrument to make sure that we can control the instrument via the software. Okay, so now let's check the method which we're going to run. We're going to build the method, select the tapping test method, say OK. The most important thing in a method is what we term as the gradient system. Okay, so in this case, you can see initially we start with 50% methanol, 50% water. Then in five minutes, we go to 100% methanol. So this makes sure that we are removing out all the organic components which are stuck in the column. Okay, so whenever we do a reverse phase HPLC, we always begin with the polar or the water phase. And as the run goes, we increase the composition of the organic solvent. So in this case, we're increasing the co composition of methanol because methanol is solvent A. Now if you see at the end of the run, or even before the end, we go back to 50-50. The reason we do that is because we have to condition our column back so it's ready for the next run. Even before we begin our first run, we got to keep the solvent and the column condition at 50-50% for at least one hour. To inject our samples, we usually use the sample loading dock over here, which is the injector port. If you notice in the back, there is a loop. And this loop is 20 microliters, so that's the amount of sample that's going to be injected into our column over here, okay? Now, you know, before we even inject our sample, we first got to flush the loop with our solvent, which is typically the mobile phase. So it could be like a 50-50 mixture of methanol and water. So we just got to make sure that there are no bubbles. We got to rinse our solvent, remove all the bubbles, and dust and then we're just going to inject. Okay. Making sure that the sample is in the load position. So all we are doing is we are flushing the loop. We can do this multiple times without, without uh, injecting. We just 
I'm gonna flush the loop to make sure everything is clean and ready to go before we inject our sample. In order to prepare our sample for injection, we first gotta filter our solution. So we're gonna use as an example the 50 ppm caffeine solution. First take a syringe. And we gotta filter it through a this filter, in this case, this filter is a 0.45 micron filter. It takes care of any small particles which we may not even be able to see. But it has to be filtered through because it's going to clog the HPLC column. We do not need much. If you remember, we just need to inject 20 microliters. So just filter as much as you can, enough to fill up the sample loop of 20 microliters. So maybe filter about even 100 microliters is good enough. Oh, that's good. And we're going to do the same thing for our Red sample. So when it comes time for any sample pretty much, we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to demonstrate two samples today, the Caffeine 50 ppm and our Red Bull sample. These are the filters which we are using. Now that the back pressure is stabilized after half an hour, we are ready to inject. Okay. So we are going to inject the filtered sample of caffeine, 50 ppm. Again, making sure that there are no air bubbles. I'm going to go to the injection chamber. And from the load position, the moment right, we turn the injector right to the inject position. The moment we do that, it has already triggered the run on this side. And the way we know that is by clicking on the real-time clock. It has started the run. So we got to wait and see now where caffeine is going to come up in this run. After we remove our sample out from the injection chamber, we got to turn back the loop low after a minute or so so we are ready for our next run but again in between every run we got to make sure that we flush the loop so we're going to wait and see now at what point caffeine is going to come out as a peak since this is pure caffeine we're just going to expect one peak coming out from the chromatogram And we see caffeine coming out in approximately a little bit more than three minutes. For our quantitative analysis, we are again going to obviously run all the calibration standards for caffeine and then run the Red Bull sample. The way we use this to quantify is we calculate the area under the peak. So again, we got to calculate all the area under the peak. We call that area counts. And once we get that, we can use that as a calibration curve. So there we have caffeine which has eluted out of the column. Once we have completed all our runs, we got to go reprocess results, open up our sample peak. Okay, and you will see that it, it picks up all noise and everything. So what we got to do is we got to go to process, baseline events, under that BF set bun bunching factor we got to choose visible peak detection. Then we got to select enable peak detection just before our peak. Go back to visible peak detection. 
right after the peak if you want to check. Press reprocess and that's how we get our peak. Press return. We go to file, print preview report and then it, print, it prints out the report but what is important is it gives us the area count under our peak. So for example our caffeine peak in this case was 176369.89. So we go write down that value. Okay. Now obviously I'm going to give you the values for this class for each and every ppm. And let me show you how it's done for the Red Bull. Because Red Bull has a very unique peak. So we're going to see Red Bull now. Okay. You notice the Red Bull, we got the peak of caffeine, but we also got another peak, right? I want you to, to tell me what that other peak is. So you can go and look at the label of a Red Bull sample and let me know what that peak is. We will, we will process both those peaks, okay? So one second, go to process, baseline events, the first disable peak detection right at the beginning, the enable peak detection just before the peak of interest, disable it between the two peaks, and we, again we enable it just before the caffeine peak and visible peak detection right after the caffeine peak. Reprocess. Go to file, print, preview report. And notice we have a bunch of peaks but the main peak which we are looking for is the caffeine peak which is around 3.3 or 3.278 minutes so that's the number 670 3618.64 so all we do is we just measure our area counts for our peaks of interest once we are done with reprocessing all your data don't forget to go to run stop the pump We got to wait. And the most important thing is to release control of the computer to the instrument. So we got to click on that release control. Click on HPLC, say OK. And we say releasing. Once it says released, we are ready to close now.